Hey YouTubers, we're back. Special edition at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. I get stumped the whole week and I see stuff that I don't even have in my own collection and it's tough to find at JTV. The whole production team, they locked me out of the room that we're in and I wasn't allowed to see anything. So this must be pretty cool. <laughs> don't shake, don't drop. I can follow directions. You've done this one before. I have no clue what will be in this box. So we're not gonna shake it. I'm not gonna drop anything. All right. What is this? I have an idea what this is. So don't shake, don't drop makes me think that this is delicate. First of all, what caught my eye was this beautiful color. What then grabbed my attention were the internal characteristics, inclusions. So don't shake, don't drop, really cool, beautiful color. I highly doubt that this is a ruby, but the stones that I know that have lots of internal characteristics, they're type three stones, would be barrel. And I know I've done a barrel before that's really rare. So I am gonna guess that this could be pezoatite. I think I butchered that word right there, but wait, no way. All right, totally stumped. I'm gonna take back my previous guess and just go with I give up and I don't know. I've done this one before. Wow, those characteristics are wild. The stone is huge. Wouldn't wear that on my finger because it looks really delicate. And if I can't shake it or I can't drop it, I probably shouldn't wear it as a ring. Maybe as a pendant? All right, stumped. No. I, yes, I, I, I no. Guess. Here's what happens at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. They try to stump me. I say I'm stumped and I get to bring a guest on. And I'm excited for our guest today because I know he's gonna know what this is. And I just wanna get to the fun part, actually figure out what this is and being able to pick the brain of a fellow gem lover like myself. Cameraman, can we move on? <laughs> I have no, I mean, could be some sort of barrel. Could this be a big spite? We haven't done and now I see like a ruby color. I see kind of a morganite. I see a fuchsia. Holy cannoli, there are lots of colors in here. I think it could be some type of barrel. That pleochrosum's throwing me off. The size is throwing me off. Internal characteristics are throwing me off. I always loved Nancy Drew mysteries and I thought I was pretty good at them because I could figure it out. But my Nancy Drew skills have gone to the trash today. Or the rubbish bin, like our friend may say. <laughs> All right, YouTube, say hello to Alan Hart of Gem A. Hi YouTube, how Tell are you? Tell everyone to watch. What? What? all the time. This is really cool. I've seen some of these. I'm doing your job. Turn off your, <laughs> TV, just turn off your TV right now and, and talk to us. Okay. okay. First of all, you guys gave me this. That's right, yeah. So here's what I thought. <laughs> Internal characteristics looked like barrel. Good. But the color threw me off. The Good. pleochrosum. Did yes. you see the all the different pinks and oranges? That's neon. That color blew my mind. But then right here, it kind of looks like a ruby. Well, I'll tell you what. This is really unusual stone because of its size. I have an idea what it is. You usually see these in one or two carats. And you don't see many of them, but you do see them. So when something like this comes along, your minimalogy and your gemology brain will go like, I've seen it before, but it's too big and it confuses That's you. That's what, yeah, because Renata was on as a guest one time and we had okay. Pizzotite, I think. Oh, I'm probably, did you? I thought that maybe this was it because of the internal characteristics and the color, but this is way too big. And I know that's an expensive stone and I don't think you would have all had that on, on the show. I'm confused. It's a Pizzotite. You yeah. got it right. Yeah, Whoa! you're first in the <laughs> I'm gonna take back my previous guess and just go with I give up and I give up. I was in the corner watching you and I thought as soon as you said that I thought wow oh, she's a really good gemology. Oh did you but, hear that guys? I give up. But you, you're gonna second guess yourself and your other instincts are gonna come in and now you're gonna start questioning it. And you did exactly the classic thing when you see these big stones. So I started when I was 16 in the museum. So you've probably seen so it all. So I've seen hundreds and hundreds of stones. And every now and then something comes to you and you think like, what is that? Let's put it right here. So if anything happens, it's on a delicate little pillow. It was discovered in 2002. <gasps> so it's a fairly new Fairly stone. new gemstone. When it first came out, everyone thought it was a cesium beryl because they did found it was cesium in the structure. So right. it's beryl group and it's cesium, a bit of lithium. They did some more work on it and they suddenly realized that it wasn't part of the group, but it was a new mineral. Someone described the structure, the chemistry, and it was one of the the most recent mineral has been cut as a gemstone. We were insanely jealous because I know the person who was named after. It was a good name, because yeah. it sounds like exotic, doesn't it? When this stuff came out, this was from the original find. They obviously pulled some away for a future date and no one has seen anything like it. And to see an 80 carat Pesotai is just phenomenal. The 80 carats? Yeah, it's about that. And you look at the depth of the stone and that's why the color throws you as well. So you see pleochrosum in the smaller stones, mm -hmm. but now you've got more material there, it's much more enhanced. So you can see peaches, raspberries, reds, a sort of neon glow to it. Yeah. And I, I could tell when you were turning it around as well, you were looking at this thing going, I can see more and more colors. So you start to go to Big Spite, the red barrel. Yeah. So when I saw this stone for the first time, I had okay. exactly the same reaction as you. Okay, like, so quick pause. Tell okay. me the difference between Big Spite and Pizzotype. Big Spite is a red barrel. 
of beryllium, aluminium silicate, some manganese in there to make it red. This has cesium and lithium inside it, but they think there's also manganese in there, okay. trivalent manganese that gives the color. So it's a new mineral, similar mineralogy, similar chemistry. I like the fact that you said you would not wear it as a ring. It's a pretty hard mineral. It's quite brittle. Yeah, because you said it's brittle and I'm not, yeah. I can't shake or drop that's it. That's right. But you had it perfect, right? There's a pendant. I think that's a pendant. It's still uh, making me really stone, nervous because really. yeah. that is such a beautiful stone. Now, if we magically took away the ceiling from here and put the sun in, in the Tucson sunshine, this thing sings. What Phenomenal. is different uh, about maybe the Tucson sun it, compared to like the London? I think we actually see the sun in Tucson. In London, we don't see the sun much. You know, it was rather <laughs> rainy. Out here, we probably notice as you go around the shows and you look at these stones, people say, hey, let's take it outside. Let's take it outside. One, it looks better. You're more likely to get a nicer sale because it looks better. But the colors are enhanced by the energy of the sunlight. Okay, I don't know if you're allowed to tell me this, but is this for sale here this week? They are for sale. This is a Granada Gallery in Tucson. Oh, there's okay, a, there's cool. a suite of these stones I've there. Seen them They're great so, yeah. friends of the Gemological Association where I work now. They like to present stuff to me that I'm going to go out. Oh and they always do it every well, year. I did that today. And this was one of them. So they were very kind to let me borrow this yeah, for, for a few Thank you hours. to the Granada Gallery. I really uh, appreciate yeah, it. You stumped me too. They're cool guys. They actually like showcasing this stuff. They, it's beautiful. They want people to come in. That wow factor is really important for gemology as a whole, I think. I, I like to call them outliers. You know, once, once you've seen a lot of material, you know the boundaries of the color, the shape, the sizes, where they're from. And every now and then a kerbal will come along like this. It will make you think like, now I've seen that. So when I see a 50 or 60 carat one, I was saying, like, oh yeah, that's a puzzle try. It becomes a norm. When I see 150, 200 one, then I go, wow. Then so you would set this in a piece of jewelry? I would, yeah. Oh, it might be a collector's stone. Remember that people collect stones. Right. They don't want to set them, but they want them in a collection. Do you like to collect stones or do you set stones? Because I was a curator of the collection, I was not allowed to collect minerals, okay, like I a conflict of interest or oh, gems, really you know. Cool. So now I'm at the Gemological Association. I can if I want. They're far too expensive. I'd rather just look at them and enjoy people who enjoy them themselves. Yeah, that's what I love about museums, is because there's a, you know, this huge collection and yeah. you can you pay a small amount and yeah. then you get to see all these beautiful stones that you never would see anywhere else. Yeah, I was very I was very privileged to work there. I mean, I was there for 30 years. So, you've, you've so I went all the way through all. and seen a lot of material, but that's the joy of it. It's the stuff. It's like a hobby. All right, that tissue paper is getting in my way. So we moved on to our next best. I'm really glad you second guess yourself though, because a lot of people do that. When you see a lot of material, your first look is the look. But yeah, that's really it was really good. Highlight of my day. I am so proud of myself. And I think everyone in this room thought they were going to stump me, but... By industry standards, this is really rare. Can you tell me where it's from and why it is so rare? It was first found in Madagascar. And I kind of consider that like a gem hotbed. There's just yeah. this weird geological... Right in the perfect mobile belt for fluids and things to go through the crust many years ago. It's an, almost an undiscovered country for minerals, so a lot is coming out of there at the moment. Right. Which is amazingly fantastic. And this is one of those. So in 2002, this was found in a small granite cavity, a myrolytic cavity. And I think something like only 50 kilograms of material ever came out of this small deposit. Then they found nothing else. We don't know when or if we're gonna find this again. That makes this stone even more awesome to have here today because we could never mine anything this size or this beautiful no, again. But someone might go back there and, and in a few years time and move a few hundred meters and find another pocket. Or even like six feet. Yeah, six, you, you could you never know. six feet over. But in this case, it, I think it's quite difficult in location. It's a long way from anywhere. It's also been found in Burma. You been to Burma? Some, no, I haven't been to Burma. I want to go to Burma. Yeah, I'd love to go there. That's a sort of nirvana of gemology, isn't it? Yeah. It's awesome. I think Sri Lanka, Madagascar, Burma, and Brazil, and Colombia too. It's yeah. just like these hotbeds, and I think any gemologist is lusting over a ticket to Yeah, and there's nothing like to go underground and collect material mm -hmm. and see where the end products actually did come from, because oh, you find yeah. how hard it is to discover and mine this stuff. It's really difficult. Yeah, you know? and that's, I think, why so many people love gemology. It's this, mm. like, thrill of the find. Everyone wants to be Indiana Jones. Yeah, I want right. to be Indiana Jones. Yeah, and of course, the color is very nice as well. So mm -hmm. it's colorful, rare, one off find, and that what gives it its cute. The color. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about the color of paparaccia. It's almost some paparaccia orange yeah, sunsets in yeah, there. When you look down right. the front face, they've cut it just right. So the front face has, right the, there. has that peachy raspberry. Right here, there's a flash of red. Right here, it could kind of look like a morganite. Yeah. And then I see a podparasha. Have you seen many podparashas? Lots. It's a variety of corundum. It's got a beautiful name. It's rare and cool because it's meant to be the cross between a lotus flower and the sunset. Orangey colored sunset. So it's romantic and it's yeah. a sibling to sapphire. It's, it's all corundum. It's a variety name of the sapphire, mm -hmm. of, yeah. And it is a beautiful stone, and that is very similar. As you notice, this one's got some inclusions. You picked up on the inclusions. Yeah, okay, beryl. So we've talked yeah. about type one, type two, and type three gemstones. Beryl is a type three stone. When you see an emerald, you're gonna see some inclusions in the middle, and that's completely acceptable, always expected with an emerald. And that is what made me think, you know, a beryl. Yeah, there's similar chemistry.
chemistry, a similar type structure, and this is quite brittle and there's a lot of inclusions in these. But I think that adds to the beauty of the stone because we call the inclusions the sort of the jardin, you know, the yeah, garden of yeah, inclusions. Garden that, inclusions. I love that term. Just the, the reflections from those inclusions sometimes can intensify the color somewhat because you're getting those reflections. Okay, yeah. that's really cool. I remember when I was at GIA, we would call it microscope therapy and you just would get lost in the yeah. center of a stone. And yeah. I would love to put this underneath a microscope and yeah. just spend a couple hours. And you sometimes have open inclusions and closed inclusions so right. there'll be cavities and they, they reflect light differently. An open inclusion has some air in there maybe and it's got two surfaces. So it's really interesting to see what inclusions will do. So it's not all about the perfect clarity. Sometimes stones are better with inclusions because they enhance the light effect more. That's and that really interesting. just probably yeah. depends on the stone. Like depends a diamond. The stone material. Yeah, for the material of diamond, you, you want the most perfectly clarity stone. Deep flawless. Yeah, that's right. But with colour, the colour is everything. And the big face-up colour as well here. And the depth of the stone, look yeah, how deep really, that is. Ma'am, okay, it just changed colour. Now it's fuchsia. Yeah. When you've got the depth, obviously you've got a bit more material to absorb the light so you get a deeper saturation. And that's why I love the stone. If you turn it over and look at it, it's quite a strange pavilion. It's almost like an old rose cut. Look at all those facets. It's yeah, big. Yeah, you know, honestly, all I think these for triangular every... triangular and diamond-shaped facets designed there. I think for every facet, there could be like a different hue. So I mentioned pleochroism. Can you give a quick explanation what pleochroism is? Pleochroism is a color absorption by material. Now, some materials, it splits the light into different rays. One of those rays is absorbed more slowly than the other, so you get two colors. Sometimes you get three colors, which is called trichroism. What's the dominant color? It depends on the orientation, because you're going to have two areas of major dominant colors. So I think one dominant color there is reddish orange, peach. And I see one dominant color as lightly purplish pink okay, on the bottom. Yeah, okay, yeah, and a nice red flash comes from oh, the right top there. Okay, the so that's, okay, so that's three. Keep our, our count up. Remember, it's only two, so it's really a combination of colors that are given these different colors in, in their various intensities. Yeah. Fuchsia, right there. That's right there, that is fuchsia. deep fuchsia. And then we go around. Oh, wow, you see no, the no, hot no. pink right there? No, but the trouble is here <gasps> is that, yeah, that hot pink, you see, that is probably an end color. So you're saying you've got hot pink, and then you've got a peach color, say. And it's a combination of hot pink and peach as you turn around, okay. given the other different colors. Okay, so what are we up to now? Four. That's what our eyes are, and our brains are telling us. You look at one end, all right, the material gets thick okay, if you look down the end. yellow right there. And we're thinning out, right you there. see. If you took the end of that and made a one carat stone, I don't think you'd get the depth of color that you're seeing I there, agree. would you? So that's why the, the size of the material gives the color. There's probably only two colors there, pleochroes and two colors, but right. your brain is looking at the interference of those and giving all those different So this, colors. not only does my production team stump me, but the yeah, yeah. stone is stumping me because I'm seeing all these different colors. And see, I swear, pink and orange right there. Yeah, and as you know, you can cut it. So if you want that color face up, you mm -hmm. prefer that color, then you get the rough material and say, no, I want that color to be front faces so people see it. And I know sphalerite is tough to cut because of the cleavage directions. Yeah, Would you totally. say the same thing about our friend think, right here? Yeah, it's hard, but it's brittle. So you've got to be careful. It's got a conchoidal fracture. So okay. it tends to like, if you drop it, it might just fracture like quartz. Heartbeats, just thinking about something. Okay. And you don't want that to happen to this. Difference between hardness and brittle. The hardness is, you know, when you scrape something along it, the inherent mm -hmm. hardness of the material. Brittle is based on a structure and what is the atomic structure inside. Does it cleave along certain planes or not? That's what it is. This is one of those stones that will stay with you. So every time you see a pizzotto, you're going to think like, oh, but I saw this one. And as you go through life, you see these little benchmarks from the way you Yeah, my heart stones. is beating so you fast when stones. you said it. I was just, yeah. this is like one of my favorite unboxings because I, oh, cool. I mean, this is so cool. My heart is just yeah, yeah. pounding. And the same for me as well. I've seen a lot of material. What I love about gemology, mineralogy is there is always something that's going to come at you and think, now I know why I love this subject so much. You naively think you know it all, and then you see something and it shatters every preconceived notion you had yeah. about gemology. Yeah. I love the fact that I can walk through the shows here and say, hey, hi, hi, and meet all these people, and they say, I want to show you something. <laughs> and everyone thinks that they've got the best, you know, because there's so many bests in this business. Yeah. I see a lot of pizzotto at the show. You go around to any dealer and say, do you have any? And they might have one or two carrot stones, quite nice colors included. This is the second one I've seen in my lifetime. The thing about the shows, there's a lot of the same gems and minerals around. Mm -hmm. We have a, what I would call a museum hat on where I want to see the whole breadth. So I go around and look at what other rare stones do you have. And some particular dealers specialize in them. And you say to them, any pizzotto? And they say, yeah, I've got these five or six pieces. And you see them, it's like, yeah, they're quite nice. How many do you think you've seen over the course of your career? Individuals, well, probably a couple of hundred. Wow, I would have thought you yeah. said like 20. I, I was... Well, a couple of hundred, 50 grams of material. I don't know how much of that is gem quality. That's true. But to cut into the small one carat, two carat, three carat stones, you get quite a lot of material. That's why when you see something like this, it's like, that's quite a significant chunk of that material. Okay, can you tell our YouTubers what you mean by gem quality? Gem quality is really, has it got the color, the, the clarity, is it cuttable material that can transform a rough piece into a gemstone? So yeah, this, as I say, this stone is a killer. 
When you saw the stone, was it the inclusions, size, or color that caught your eye first? It was the size. So we're yeah. a little different Column on size. that. Yeah, because well, you probably knew what it was and you were looking at it, so you expected yeah. the color. Now that I know what this is and we've talked about it, I think yeah. I'm gonna change and go size, color, and then inclusions. And you'll never forget that as well. No, trust me, I will never, ever forget the stone. And I hope all of you watching will never forget what we've talked about today. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool piece. And you really only get it when you actually can see it in real life with your eyes. Almost an experience. Well, that sounds really like really No, trust that me, I'm not gonna forget the stone ever and whoever has cut this they are they're pretty talented too they did they did a great job they had the right material and they had the right thoughts about how to do it so hardness diamond is a 10 corundum which Random. is ruby sapphire all that jazz is a nine it's eight on the hardness scale so it's, it's pretty hard whoa this is an eight wow you know this little guy is just full of surprises to me i shouldn't say little this is not <laughs> 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 the inclusions and the structure is, is quite brittle i'm not sure what happens if you want to regrind it repolish you get heating if you wear it as a ring and look how deep that is you bang it on something then you might just get a fracture especially if you've got prongs into the stone it might concentrate the the forces of that knock or dropping it so you just, you just be careful i would never put it in a ring no no i don't think so it's too big i think this actual stone will probably stay as a signature stone as a collector's item just to say this is how good they got so you're at this show and you see a two carat what is the ballpark price per carat that's a really good question it depends on the color and the quality of the because stone but you know 50 dollars a carat up to 200 300 400 500 dollars a carat depending on the color and of course just like any gem so once you get a higher sizes it doesn't go up in a straight line it sometimes goes like this exponentially something funny about gemology is there's never a concrete yeah, price that's right i mean look all the gemstones there's many thousands of one and two carat stones of the same species mm -hmm. but once you get over five or six ten twelve carrots they become rarer mm -hmm. with rarity comes value comes higher prices then you see a stone such as this and you might be thinking of maybe many thousands probably costs more than my gemological education absolutely okay all right alan i want you to tell our youtubers coolest thing about today's unboxing the coolest thing about today's unboxing was your surprise that you actually got the stone And I thought, wow, that's great. And that you reworked yourself into a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> so you've questioned yourself and then you decided you didn't know what it was, so you knew what it was. And I think that's exactly what people's reactions are who know what they're doing mm -hmm. when they see great stones like that and have a wealth of experience. I'm really glad that I was able to bring something that you enjoyed. I think that's enjoy I like. is a huge understatement. I mean, I love gemstones. I love gemology. Yeah. I think I've got the best job in the whole wide world. But yeah. it is things like these that make me realize like why I'm in this great business. Yeah. Can I just say, I'm a great believer in telling people about these things. So I'm really glad that you're all seeing this because yeah. Yeah. We can see it ourselves and it just stays with us. But the fact that we're sharing something that's so great to many people who might get infused and might love this is awesome. We're sharing our passion with you all and that I think is, you know, one of the reasons I love coming to work. I get to share gemology with you all. Absolutely. Hold that up to the camera and tell everyone what you want them to take a closer look at. I don't know if you can capture this, but I like to look at the color. And as I turn the stone, maybe you can see how it changes. So I'm just simply turning it in one direction. Thank you so much for watching today. This was probably one of the most exciting and cool episodes on unboxing. We had an 80 carat stone, so I wanna wish Alan Hart of Gem A an 80 carat thank you for joining us today. I learned so much. Aren't you glad you subscribed? Because if not, you would have missed this 80 carat pizzodite today. Pizzodite? Pizzodite? Oh gosh, I can't talk, I'm so excited. If you haven't subscribed, you're gonna to wanna to do that now so you don't miss out on what we've got coming up next.